People think I'm damaged goods. I'm worried about losing my job. Will I ever get a transplant? I want to see my children graduate from college. How can I afford this? I don't want to be a burden. I'm afraid. I'm overwhelmed with information. Sometimes I wonder if I'll ever fall in love and get married. I just want to play with my friends. You're listening to Kidney Talk, streaming health, happiness, and hope to the renal community with your hosts, Lori Hartwell and Stephen First. Hey, welcome to Kidney Talk, and we're having a celebration today. It's the one-year birthday or anniversary of Lori Hartwell. Who, who is that again, Lori Hartwell? You know, it's some, it's some lady that might be in the room. Oh, Lori Hartwell's <laughs> transplant. What is this, your eighth transplant? What is this? <laughs> yeah, well, no, you know, the other day, actually, somebody had said something. I'm like, oh, I had four kidneys. She's like, oh, you've had four kids? <laughs> and I said, no, uh, four kidney transplants. And so, you know, my fourth kidney transplant was in February at my one-year anniversary, and I have a new lease on life. A new le- now, usually they say three times a charm. You were a little slow, so you did four times a charm. Yeah, four times a charm. I'm going to start a new trend. But, yes, it's amazing. You know, when I got this kidney, I had 100% antibodies. What does that mean? Uh, That that means, like, I had fighter pilots in my bloodstream ready to attack anything. So ready to attack the... The organ. And I had a hundred... the doctor. Well, you know, I do that if they don't take care of me well. But, um, yeah, like 100% antibodies, which mean your antibodies is your immune system that, you know, basically warts off or defends things. And a transplant is considered a foreign object. So I am so grateful that, you know, for the great work of Cedar sinai and I went through a whole desensitization program that, you know, they were able to transplant me. And I have to tell you, Stephen, all my labs are in normal. It's amazing. You know, when you look at that sheet and it says out of range, right. all my uh, labs are in normal. I, I, I did one for ADD and it said out of range. <laughs> <laughs> it did as a child, as a child. Well, that's, that's that, that explains homeschool. a lot. You know, that, I was the that only explains person, so much. I was the only person that got sent to the principal, and I was homeschooled. <laughs> was that the was your dog named Principal? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's the secret ingredient for delicious yet healthier meals? Why, Mrs. Dash seasoning blends, of course. The 12 varieties of Mrs. Dash are all made up with a unique blend of 14 natural herbs and spices to make side dishes snap, potato pop, and dinner days unbelievable. And since Mrs. Dash has always been salt-free with no MSG, you can create great-tasting meals full of only one thing, mouth-watering flavor. Here's an easy-to-make, healthy recipe idea. Coat some boneless chicken breast in a mixture of Parmesan cheese, breadcrumbs, and Mrs. Dash original blend. Saute in extra virgin olive oil until done. Then give a small squeeze of fresh lemon juice and serve over your favorite pasta. Mm. Doesn't that sound good? Well, for more information, visit MrsDash.com. Mrs. Dash, salt-free, flavorful. So let me ask you, so what happened to your first three kidneys? Well, you know, people ask that like four, how did you get that? How did you get that many? And I'm like, well, you know, I've lived long enough to get four kidneys. Um, no, but what happened to the well, first Well, my three? first two, I got one in 1979, and they didn't know what they were doing, and it just never worked. And I got my second kidney in 1983, and, you know, that one worked for a while, maybe six weeks, but unfortunately, it came with a hepatitis, non-A, non-B, which we all know that's hepatitis C, and I also had a, a you, virus. So you, you got this kidney that was like, had hepatitis and... Uh, and C and B, and well, they just why, didn't why have did the test. What was in 83, like they didn't have the sophisticated testing they have today. So, unfortunately, that kidney didn't work. What, a homeless guy sold you a kidney or something? No, it was actually a deceased donor, and it was actually a young child. And the reason they found out that it came from the kidney was because the other kid that got the other kidney came in with the exact 
same symptoms. And then, unfortunately, you know, it's a medical practice, and uh, I've been practicing since 1968 uh, with this illness. And um, luckily, I'm here to tell the tale. My goodness. And so in 83, you know, it didn't work, and um, I went back on dialysis. I was uh, 14 at the time. And uh, I got a, 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 no, I'm sorry, I was 17 at the time. My first one was You're at 13. You're lying about your age again. Yes, I know. It's kind of hard when you, I, I keep saying, I keep saying my driver's license is wrong, you know. But uh, age Isn't the 13. As kids, we always wanted to be, I know at seven, I wanted to be 10. I know. You know, and then you hit like your mid to late 20s and you want to be younger. You want to be a teen again. Right. I mean, because when people hit 30, they well, go, oh my gosh. And then you when know? you hit 40, you want to be 30. When you hit 50, you want to hit 40. When you hit 70, you want to be 50. All right, wait, wait. I mean, anyways. I need, I need an app for that. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I need an app for that. But, uh, and then um, I was lucky to receive a transplant in 1990. It was a, a deceased donor, a, a man from um, Denver who was in an accident. And I named my kidney Denver because uh, it, it lasted 20 years, this transplant. Are you a Broncos fan automatically? Uh, you Did know you what? Yeah, yes, definitely. Oh, I see. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that kidney lasted 20 years, and it just kind of started to putter out. Well, you it, know, that's the average life of a... Actually, you... No, you... Oh, wow. yeah. No, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm a high achiever. A, yeah, an average life of a donor, a deceased donor, is about 11 years, and a live donor is 20 to 25 years. So you really yeah, took they, good they change the money. statistics every year because back in 1990, the statistics weren't that great because they get better every year with, you know, new meds and all this technology. And actually, one of the things that's so amazing right now, and I got my fourth transplant from my stepsister, Cindy, who uh, I was so lucky that she gave me the gift of life. And uh, what's interesting now is they have a test called donor-specific antibodies. So, you know, what they did is when they had my donor, they knew exactly what little fighter pilots I had to my, my sister. And so they could treat those antibodies to make sure that I wouldn't fight her kidney. And they can do blood tests now to tell me if those little antibodies are you know, kicking up steam, and then they can actually fight them before they start rejecting the kidney. Isn't that pretty amazing? That is amazing. So you have, you have a step kidney. Uh, yes, and I named it Lulu because my uh, uh, sister's middle name is Louise, and I have to tell you, I have to go to the Lou a lot. So I thought Lulu was the right name for this kidney. Why do you name your body part? Well, because it just, they're like your best friend. Really? I have one body part that's my best friend, but I won't tell you his name. <laughs> God, please, no. You didn't name your kidney? No, I didn't name my kidney. I had it in Cincinnati, so I guess I could... Can name it Cincinnati. Yeah, well, that's a weird name. Well, any naming any body part's a weird name. What are you talking about? Well, you know, this kidney is my best friend, so I, I well, feel. Well, like I want to tell your husband that. <laughs> it is. It's my best friend. I tell you, when you don't have a working kidney, uh, you know, uh, you know, dialysis was a great bridge for me, but. Um, you know, it's so great because I feel so much better. And, you know, the thing is, is that um, I had this, uh, I go to a group called Toastmasters. And when you have a functioning I kidney, love Toastmasters. I, I love Toastmasters, too. I it like, really helps me so much. Especially with the egg and, and you put the powdered sugar on <laughs> yes, it. Yes, exactly. The French Toastmasters. Yes, exactly. I love those. Uh, well, for those of you who, uh, Toastmasters is an organization that helps you improve your speaking skills. Why is it called Toastmasters? Uh, you know what? Because somebody in the early 20s, 30s, I can't remember the date, named it. Like, you know, you're going to give a toast and you're going to be a master at it. And, you know, it's just a name that's, you know, beyond its uh, years. Toastmasters. Toastmasters. Now, is this a free organization or does it It's cost? like a membership organization and it costs, you know, I mean, I don't know, it's very inexpensive and I highly suggest anybody join and check it out. You can go to toastmasters.org and find all about it. Oh, well. Okay. But yes, but anyways, I was at this meeting and uh, and it was just probably about six months after my transplant. And this guy came up to me in my meeting and says, wow, you look so much better or you wear expensive makeup. Now, do you think I should take that as a compliment? 
Well, I think you should take it as a compliment, you know, because you look better. And you you knew that you you didn't look good because of the kidney problem. Now, would you say that to anybody? No, I, no. Personally, no. I wouldn't say that to anybody. Yeah. You know? It was a nice thing. I think he meant well, but it was like a... People are in, inept socially. Well... Have you ever been to a sci-fi convention? No. It's a den of inequity. <laughs> You know, is that <laughs> you, 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 you travel to those all the time, right? Oh, absolutely. I, I love being inept. Now, what, <laughs> why do you t attend these conferences? Yeah, I mean, you know, the sci-fi fans are very special people. And, do and you have a favorite sci-fi character? D no, uh, not really. I have, uh, no, not really. No? A sci-fi, I'm really, it's funny because I do the sci-fi conventions because of my past, but I really was never into sci-fi. Were you an alien in a previous year? I was. I was an alien on a television show. You played, um, what was his name? I, his name was Veer Koto. Veer. From Babylon 5. And what's interesting is that race of alien had six kidneys. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Now, did you pick that or did you write that into the script? I didn't write it at all. It was part of the <laughs> He character. had six kidneys. So yeah, six kidneys. Now, did he have two hearts or something, or just no, just six kidneys? Wow, that's too bad that there aren't actually real veers here, because then we wouldn't have an organ shortage. No, then we'd have donors coming out our ears, so to speak. <laughs> there was an ear transplant on the show too. So. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. So, how long did it take you to get into makeup for that it, character? It took me uh, about thirty minutes. I I didn't have that much makeup. Oh, anyway. okay. But I, <laughs> I don't know. know that. You. No, your your kidney uh, did it. Did you recover real fast as the other ones, or did it would take Well, longer? it was amazing. I got the kidney on Friday. We went into surgery. This is last Friday? No, no. It was February oh. 4th of oh, that's right. 2011. 2011. Uh, went in, and that night, um, you know, they give you a lot of steroids. So the following morning, about oh, 4 o'clock in the so morning. You're so hairy. Um, <laughs> 4 o'clock in the morning, I was walking the halls. I had so much energy and felt so much better. And in, in fact, uh, and this is kind of a interesting, I mean, I hope people appreciate it. They had a full-time nurse emptying my urine bag. That's how much urine I was putting out after the transplant. She was devoted to you? Well, to measuring it. I mean, because you have to measure everything. And it was a bright, clear yellow, which is a wonderful sign. And, uh, you know, the only thing that was difficult about this transplant is because it was my fourth. I'm not very tall. You know, I'm taller than I look. But they kind of had to do like an inter-abdominal transplant. And that's the kind of transplant they do for babies. So they put it up kind of high in my stomach area, now in the lower part. So the worst part of the entire transplant was I had to have a GI tube from Friday to Sunday morning. And I don't know if anybody's ever had a GI tube, but it's that, that hose that goes up your nose and into your stomach because they didn't want, you know, when they put the kidney in, they had to kind of shove the other organs over. Oh, that was part of my alien costume too, is the nose hose. Oh, we it's it horrible. Hose. It's horrible. Uh, because, you know, your mouth gets dry and you can't drink anything, but they wanted to make sure that when they kind of shoved the kidney in and made it work, they didn't like twist a bowel or something like that where they wanted to make sure that all the plumbing, everything worked correctly. But Sunday, I got that GI tube out, which was like, oh my goodness, it was a long 24 hours with that. But Monday, the following Monday after my transplant, which was crazy, is my phosphorus was 1.7. What does that mean, phosphorus 1.7? It's, well, you know, when you're on dialysis, your phosphorus always runs a little high. It runs to about between 4.5. Mine was but close to 5, kind of right there. And, you know, phosphorus is a big part, you know, of dialysis. You have to limit your phosphorus. Well, the following Monday, my phosphorus was so low, I had to start getting IV phosphorus. Isn't and that funny? You go from having, I had the same thing, actually. Because, you know, I remember taking the Foslo pills or something similar, and I would always forget them. I'd even bring them into the restaurant with me and just forget them. And I remember fighting high phosphorus, and then, you know, after the transplant, my phosphorus was so low, I was eating yogurt and nuts and everything to, to raise my phosphorus. So it is an abrupt yes. change. I had to drink, they said, drink Diet Coke, drink. I went um, home with phosphorus supplement packets that I had to dump in my water three times a day. 
And it took about three or four weeks to get that to start being regulated where I just was then on a high phosphorus diet. So needless to say, all my wonderful friends out there sent me cheese and chocolate. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> isn't that amazing? I mean, you go from one extreme to oh, the and other. I, and, and the one I'm having now is potassium because I always had to limit my diet. Like no bananas, no oranges, no tomatoes, you know. And now I have to eat these things to keep my phosphorus up. So I mean, what, I'm sorry, my potassium. Your potassium. Isn't it amazing how, I mean, the most spectacular thing about this kidney is that I am on no blood pressure medicine the first time in 43 years. My blood pressure is 100 over 60. I'm on no Lasix. In fact, I got to make sure I, you know, drink a lot of water and eat a little bit of salt because they don't want my blood pressure under 100 over 60. They want that pressure moving through that kidney. So um, it's working incredibly well. So and, your uh, transplant has, has it's the done, best kidney I've ever had. It's the best. <laughs> it's the <laughs> best to... kidney. I mean, literally, I uh, you know, my creatinine for my third transplant was 2.2 for 20 years. It never moved. It was until it started to at the end. So and you lived with 2.2. For 20 years. Wow. See. Well, you know, it's such a wonderful gift when, you know, somebody steps forward and gives a living donor that's kidney. That's why they're called a step sister they step uh, forward they step forward and uh you know she'll always be by my side because she'll she, the now, let me ask you something psychologically did she just go ahead and offer that right away or? well i had a lot of people step forward to donate a kidney for me i had a, a total of about eight people that came forward and it turned wow. out there was about five that were eligible and then um, they basically, the first person who was going to donate, they found some medical issues. Mm -hmm. And then my uh, sister Cindy was the second person in line. And it was amazing. I had a nephrology nurse who's known me throughout the um, you know, years, seen all the work that I've done, want to donate. I had uh, my brother-in-law. Uh, come forward. My husband wanted to donate. He was not able to. But I, I was so moved by people coming forward you know, how to did want you to choose? donate. How did you? You have. Let's say yet you're down to three. Well, I don't choose. Uh, when whenever you want to, you know, if you're in the situation I was, and people said, "Oh, I want to donate a kidney," um, is uh, you know to just call this number, and I just gave him the transplant center's number, and then the transplant center follows up with him. I was even moved that my assistant's mother. Went, came forward to donate a kidney to me. It was a. I was just incredibly moved yeah, but by. How, how do you choose? If the, I don't choose the transplant center. And they chose it. your sepsis. Well, yeah, they they rank them based on you know who's the best match for you. And the first person who was matched me, they found some medical reasons that right. he couldn't donate at the final stages because they screen the people so well. Right, right. And then it, it just turned out that my uh, sister Cindy was the best match for me. And, you know, I was very lucky because I had other donors after that that, you know, would have potential donors that, you know, might have worked out. But I, I was extremely lucky to have so many people come forward to help, help give me this uh, chance at, um, you know, another life and freedom of uh, not having to do dialysis. Well, I mean, that's an amazing story. You know, you know, it's funny. I didn't have a choice either. I was waiting in line. And, and you know, my story that is that I had an anonymous donor. I still don't know who it is. That's amazing. Well, you're you know, Stephen first. So, you know, they, they that, get they a dollar uh, twenty five or dollar sixty. Now you can get a Starbucks. You can coffee. get a Starbucks small, coffee. Small, small but, not a grande. No, not a grande. I'm not worth a grande. I'm just a tall. <laughs> But, uh, well, yes. And so, um, you know, it's really incredible. I mean, I've been able to, you know, travel a lot more and, you know, put a lot of more energy into, uh, you know, just doing what I love to do is help people with kidney disease. Um, everybody knows I'm, I'm, I love jewelry and crafts and arts and animals. And uh, I just have so much more energy. And, you know, the reason is, is I'm not doing dialysis, uh, you oh, know. Of course. Because I mean, that takes a lot of time. Oh, and time and energy. And it just, uh, I know that I, you know, I try to, uh, you know, do dialysis in the morning and then go about my day. But I was just, I basically had to sleep the rest of the day after dialysis because I was just so wiped it's out. Tired. Well, I tried to do our sh our talk show right after dialysis, and that's when a, a nephrologist we were interviewing said, "What's wrong with you?" You know, because I was just so right. spacey. 
And that's when I learned about home dialysis. Yes, uh, which really helps. Oh, it helped me a lot. Yeah, when I was on home, I did much better, but I just got cold a lot. And I think I was anemic and a lot of things. So those little things just, you know, kind of zap your energy sometimes. Well, I have heard, I had heard that about you, that you were a cold person. <laughs> but, um, you know, I didn't, you know, I, once yeah, I, yeah, you, once you, I got You didn't know, judge me. You found out no, that I, I really have that. a... Listen, it's a happy anniversary. I know. Well, you know, I, I always say happy P-Day because, well, that's you know... <laughs> that's That's literally <laughs> disgusting. And, you know, I could have, you know, gone without hearing about the tube down your throat as well. So, uh, anyway, happy anniversary. Okay, what are you going to get me? <laughs> a purse. We can control our own destiny. We can take charge of our health and ask questions about our medical options. We can form partnerships with our health care team. We can take steps towards self-improvement. We can be sensitive to the impact of our disease on our family. We can sing, dance, laugh, and enjoy our lives. We can appreciate today and look forward to tomorrow. We can help and support our fellow patients. We can pursue our hopes and dreams. We can make a difference. 